three, two, one. Two years ago today. This is a tornado emergency. Oh my God, look at that. From Hackleburg to Tuscaloosa. One of the worst uh, fears I've had in my life. On to Pratt City. Tonight, devastation and despair are sweeping Pratt City. Thank God. We, he said he spared our life. Concord. And I just held on and he tried to reach back and get me. Cordova and Coleman. That's all I know. I know I survived as God was standing there. 62 tornadoes showed no mercy on the state of Alabama. I've never seen anything like this. Two years later, we remember the lives lost and honor those who survived. The tornado tried to destroy us, but we came back stronger than steel. Tonight on CBS 42 News at 5, it's been a busy week for Homewood police, from searching for a killer to a fiery police chase this afternoon. And more than 100 people are missing in Alabama. We speak with a father on the six-year anniversary of his daughter's disappearance. Plus, it's a mixed message. Friends and family remember an associate pastor's wife, but are concerned as police don't know who murdered Karen Shahan. Now this is my company vehicle. I've had it for a number of years. Now you can see where the rest of the home ended up, about 100 yards over there. This is an example of why the fight for civil rights is far from over. The ground is extremely soft and vehicles get stuck like this news van behind me. But to see an I-beam folded in half, now that's power. In Hamilton, Alabama, I'm Philip Onimus, CBS 42 News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cynthia Gould. We have breaking news out of Clay County tonight. The Ashland police chief was shot and airlifted to UAB Hospital. This is a picture of Chief Benny Davis from the Ashland City website. Be nice, be nice. Who's ready? Very economical and it's give you a great place to come and just enjoy your family. It's opening day at the ballpark, so was it a home run or a strikeout with fans? Good evening, everyone. I'm Shanesty Myers. Thank you for joining us. A deadly day in central Alabama. We do have team coverage from the crime scenes surrounding our viewing area. Our Scott Packard is in Oxford following a police-involved shooting with multiple people dead in Cleburne County. But we begin with our Tiffany Westry. She's live at St. Vincent's Hospital, where many people are wondering what would possess a man to enter a hospital with a handgun. Tiffany. It's a deadly day in Jefferson County as domestic disputes leave one woman stabbed to death and another shot to death. They ranged in age from just four months to three years old. They met their deaths following a shocking act by their own father. He was convicted of the crime in 2009. Now that sentence has been overturned. Plus, new information about a string of events that ended with the accidental kidnapping of two small children. I'm hearing her screaming for help. Tonight, trying to forget the unimaginable. Friends and neighbors react after a mother is shot and her two-year-old son is murdered. Plus, as Christians celebrate Holy Week, a local church prays for equality. We believe that God's love is for everyone. The battle over gay marriage is heading to the Supreme Court and Birmingham is watching. He was here in church every Sunday morning and uh, along with his family, they taught him uh, good values. Um, he lived a uh, uh, good moral life. But first, saying goodbye to a beautiful little boy. Mass was much different for those attending St. Thomas More Catholic Church in Kansas City, Missouri today. For the first time, Luke Rochette was not among those celebrating Palm Sunday. Good evening, I'm Gina Repman. The Brissette family remains here in the Magic City tonight. Luke Brissette died Friday afternoon after a sign at the Birmingham airport gave way, changing his family's life forever. Tonight, we spoke with Luke's uncle to learn more about this 10-year-old boy who meant so much to so many. Major changes to Alabama's sentencing laws. Good evening, I'm Gina Redman. In less than a year, the sentencing guidelines will change, ensuring that all nonviolent offenders are treated equally in the eyes of the law. Tonight, Philip Onimus explains how this change will affect the state's overcrowded prisons. The Alabama justice system needs an overhaul, and the state sentencing commission is working in small steps to ensure justice is the same for everyone. 
something not true in the past. With movies generating billions at the box office, mainstream multiplexes are popping up like never before. But tonight, our Philip Onimus takes us to a place where a family-owned and operated theater is the talk of the town, even though there are just two screens and no stadium seating. There's nothing quite like it. Freshly made popcorn. If you're planning to nestle down with a family for a few hours, you need a big bucket. And this old school snack bar has plenty of it. And the University of Montevallo is widely considered one of the most beautiful campuses in Alabama. But long before becoming a beacon of academia, there is a history of wealth, death, and the supernatural. Our producer at Philip Onimus shares a part of that story. Reynolds Hall served as a Civil War trauma center which came under siege during Wilson's raid. We have a theater at Reynolds Hall. They often uh, will say that they feel a presence and it's often thought of as an evil presence and they felt a cold wind at night uh, just sort of going by them. And then there are the stories of the unexplainable. The portrait of Captain Reynolds mysteriously keeps moving from room to room and place to place in Reynolds Hall. Across campus, there is King House. It's one of the oldest homes in central Alabama. It's here where Edmund King met his death, where his ghost is rumored to stay. The upstairs bedroom, um, students have said that there's often a strange light there and the curtains will move without anyone in King House. So what is it that ties this spirit to our world? He was quite wealthy and that, that was a little unusual. And so the legend is that he had some gold coins and he, the legend is that he buried the gold coins out in his peach orchard. He passed away in 1863 without telling anyone where he had buried these gold coins. He's merely an apparition who continues to protect what is his alone. Many, many reports of seeing uh, a, a, a strange light, uh, like a lantern. And many people have interpreted that as Mr. King with a shovel still searching for his gold coins. At the University of Montevallo, Philip Onimus, CBS 42 News. Ugh, creepy. All right. When it comes to haunted campuses, Drish House in Tuscaloosa may get most of the attention. But as Tiffany Westry explains, there's a university in Shelby County that hosts one of the most frightening ghostly tales in our state. At the University of Montevallo, ghost stories are nothing new. From Mr. King Specter searching for lost gold to Captain Reynolds' endless nights of remorse but one story trumps them all. I would say our most famous ghost is Condi Cunningham. Condi Cunningham's story begins February 4th, 1908, when she and a roommate decided to break curfew to cook a sweet treat. In their haste not to get caught, they tipped over the burner. And the flames caught her nightgown, the back of her nightgown. And um, pretty much immediately, her clothing was caught on fire and she was engulfed. <laughs> Condi continued to scream as she ran down the hall of main dorm. And by the time they got to her and put a blanket over her, she was pretty much fatally burned. Two days later, Condi died. Her body was buried at Edgewood Cemetery, but not her spirit. Girls that have lived in main dorm have always claimed to hear, they claim to hear her screams. They claim to see a white presence. They claim to hear sounds and shuffling at night. But that's not all. This door holds the hook of this ghostly tale. That's the face of Condi Cunningham with the flames coming out of the top of her hair. That's right, an image so powerful and frightening, the door had to be removed. This is, some people would say, paranormal evidence of Condi Cunningham <laughs> still in Montevallo to this day. In Montevallo, Tiffany Westry, CBS 42 News.
These are frightening mm -hmm. ghost stories. Listen, get your popcorn all this week. Join us tomorrow night as we investigate a ghost story that involves an iron worker being boiled alive. Let me say that scream was piercing, we just heard. Haunted houses are fun, entertaining places of horror. I'm trying to get that uh, Halloween <sighs> voice, I know. And Sloss Furnaces is home to one of our area's finest. Yeah, but as historians at the site will tell us, the fun of Fright Night has many guests confused as to which stories are real and which are pure fiction. Thousands of people pour through the haunted house at Sloss each fall, many hoping to catch a glimpse of the furnace's most infamous ghost. Legend says James Wormwood was pushed into a furnace and boiled alive for his cruel treatment of the workers. But... Slag is fictitious. Um, we have gone far and beyond all the company records, oral histories, and we have never heard uh, or seen in any, any writing about a James Wormwood, a.k.a. Slag. That's not to say Sloss doesn't have a bloody past. Of course, this is a very, very, very dangerous place to work. Long before OSHA, workers were forced to endure horrendous conditions. Iron was flowing. You had to be careful not to trip and fall in it. And with water everywhere and open electrical conduits, electrocution was frequent. Of course, it looked nothing like these guys, but we'll never know just how many people did die here. Detailed records were never kept, and many of those killed were undocumented inmates forced to work as free day laborers. But do their ghosts truly haunt this century-old landmark? We've certainly had other reports of people, um, you know, feeling, you know, really like maybe they're being watched they feel really odd um, we've had people um, report um, of hearing things being touched it's enough to keep visitors coming I hope when they leave that they take away a better understanding of what's real and what's not i have to admit i'm more afraid of the uh, rodents that roam the site <laughs> <laughs> But when it comes to classic haunts, no stories older than the one of a father's betrayal. This story unfolds at Birmingham's East Lake at the tail end of the 1800s, and it explains why jack-o'-lanterns pop up along the dock on this night each year. The carving of pumpkins takes on new meaning in East Birmingham. This is one of the city's oldest parks, and so its long history includes one of the city's oldest murder mysteries. Early in December of 1888, um, a body floated to the top of East Lake. The body would be identified as seven-year-old May Hawes. May had been in the water for several days. The chief suspect, her own father. Each year, hundreds of people are drawn into May's unmarked grave at Oak Hill Cemetery, where actors share the stories of the dead. My name is Emma Hawes, and I'm buried here at Oak Hill Cemetery. They are told of a father and husband's betrayal his impending marriage, and the announcement that they would uncover his horrific deed. So he was promptly arrested and charged with the murder of our daughter, May. As the weeks wore on, Emma and May's younger sister, Irene, were also recovered from watery tombs. The public demanded justice, but the system proved too slow. All in all, 11 people were killed in the riots, and more than 28 were injured, including um, two children. The story of May Hawes continues to haunt the Eastlake community. People have said that they've seen her walking the shores of Eastlake, um, and that if you throw a carnation into the water, that she'll appear to you. Each Halloween Eve, pumpkins are carved and placed to light her way and to warm her spirit. All right, very creepy. You can see the story again and all the other Halloween ghost stories online at CBS42news.com. And join us. On a sunny fall weekend, all is peaceful in this place where generations of people lay at rest. But in the distance, you can hear him. It's like grunts and the sound of a speared shovel piercing into the ground. You're a what? A grave digger. For 21 years, Bradley Morgan has dug graves by hand. It's a family business. The business began in 1971 with nothing more than a few shovels and some strong backs. They started for $60 grave, then it expanded all over. And 42 years later, business is still good. Because as they say, the only sure things in life are death and taxes. That's about right, right bro. 
<laughs> it's hard work that Morgan and his family takes pride in. Well, me and my brother Pudge, you know, it was about two years ago, wasn't it, baby? Mm -hmm. We dug five in one day. We started at seven, well, six o'clock in the morning, and we got done at about nine o'clock at night by hand. I mean, he's got the record on it. The work is slow and precise. Cause that's why I never, why did you pick? You take a shovel and turn it twice. That's exactly eight foot long. And that's all you need. That's all you need to bury a box. At least that's how Morgan has come to think of it. I'm not saying I'm cold hearted or nothing. It's just I look at like burying a box, you know, because it, you can't let it get to you. If you let it get to you, it'd, it'd drive you crazy. In most businesses, deadlines can be moved, but not this one. You rain, sled, or snow, you're going you're gonna to dig a grave. That grave's got to be dug. You know, you know, like, at some other job, they put them off. We don't. We, we, go, we got to go. Because when the fear, you know, fear home calls, you got to have that grave dug. But regardless of the conditions, there is one grave Morgan will not dig. I don't like bearing babies anymore. I tell my cousin Danny, you know, don't send me on the baby graves because it, that gets to me right there because I got, you know, so many kids, you know. Because we had one die on us uh, two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, now that bothers me. At Oak Hill Cemetery, Philoponymous, CBS 42 News. Birmingham Mayor Larry Lankford promised to clean up Birmingham. And so far, most of his projects have been successful. But for all the good that has been done in the city over the last year, there is one community that remains forgotten. In fact, this graffiti behind me is the same graffiti I showed you in Wylam one year ago. Neighbors here were energized last year after the mayor took a hard line when gang graffiti began appearing in the Druid Hills community. I just been we go turn this town over to a bunch of folks out here who have decided they're going to come in here and terrorize our neighborhoods. It, it's over with now. But even though the Druid Hills signs are gone, the same can't be said for Wyland. It's still here. Yes, I know. It's like it's getting worse than uh, what it was last year. Some business owners have all but given up trying to remove the blemishes. And others, like Elton Joslin, believe the graffiti is killing the community. It does impact our business because we I feel like people just drive by and they see the mess and they think this is not a good area and they just keep on going. Some neighbors wonder why the success of Weed and Seed in East Birmingham doesn't expand west. But the program is limited and there are not enough dollars to expand the project into Wylam. It is time to clean up Wylam. It is time to put Wylam on the level of Southside. We want a beautiful city out here and it's got to start with getting these signs off these buildings. Reporting in Wylam, Philip Onimus, CBS 42 News. What's your name? <laughs> Operation Stop the Cycle is all about cracking down on repeat offenders who are tied to drugs through use or distribution. I'll tell you what, Wendy. <laughs> Smart ass. You got a warrant for your arrest. During today's roundup, 14 warrants will be executed. But this isn't TV, and that means the people officers are after aren't always where they're supposed to be. Now, I appreciate you telling me where he lives. But you call him when we pull out from here, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. 25-year-old mm -hmm. police chief Nick Smith is leading the charge. But not every arrest is easy, especially when children are involved. What about my kids, man? My wife needs to stay here with the kids. she got one, too. If she, well, she didn't have one, I'd let her stay here with the kids. But I mean, you're going to have to... We need somebody because I don't want to have to call DHR. And that's what I have to and behind every successful police operation, like this one for instance, there's a dedicated dispatcher back at home base. Here in Paris, the dispatcher not only makes sure that the officers are getting to the location safely, but also monitors the inmates that they bring back here to the city jail. But they don't stay here long as they are sent on to county lockup for processing. Police. And then it's back to the streets for the U.S. Marshals and Parish PD. In Parish, Philoponymous, CBS 42 News. Take a look at what neighbors are dealing with on Hidden Valley Road just east of the Tuscaloosa city line. A mobile home is sitting just above the water line. It happened so quick this morning, we were afraid they didn't get out, so we're just checking on them. 
Well, the road flooded out in three different places over a two-mile stretch, but that didn't stop Adam Tant from checking on his construction projects. You can see the road on both sides. You Did don't you? have to be a rocket scientist to figure out where the road's at. But others in the community say it's just not worth the risk to pass a flooded roadway. We was you know, going to try to work a little bit, haul some scrap iron, and it rained us out. So you couldn't get to work? No. Why? How high was the water? It was some places two or three foot deep. During the morning hours, the rains in the Tuscaloosa area have been relentless. It's almost as if somebody's turned on a faucet and then snapped off the handle. In fact, you got a cow right here just about in the roadway. He basically swam out of his pasture. The flood of rainwater turned the pasture into a cow patty cocktail. While Bessie here was fine, some of the calves needed a little help. I had to go across and get those young ones out. Uh -huh. <laughs> They'll dive in there. And uh, I trusted a rotten limb to stand on like he an idiot. He was chest deep. And so what happened? Well, I went on a cross, but my feet were doing this. <laughs> and fortunately, the calves came out okay. In Tuscaloosa County, I'm Philip Onimus, CBS 42 News. There's nothing quite like it. Freshly made popcorn. If you're planning to nestle down with a family for a few hours, you need a big bucket. And this old school snack bar has plenty of it. Rex Johnson and his family have been operating this place for 60 years. And the excitement of a new release never gets old. Yeah, we always enjoy this part of the night, you know, when the customers come in and we always get to talk with them and interact with them and they're all excited about seeing the movies and man, it's just a great atmosphere, you know, family atmosphere and we love it. And so do the customers. We were just talking on how a drive-in theater is rare. That's right, a drive-in. The 411 drive-in in center draws people from hundreds of miles away. People like Shauna and Ron Williams, who drove in from Georgia to see a movie that was likely playing much closer to home. I think it was a little less than an hour, but we'll say an hour. But it's the nostalgia of it. The, the nostalgia is so thick you can cut it with a knife. You know, I mean, when you're talking about before this, it was probably 20 years ago. But the 411 drive-in has come a long way from 20 years ago. Consider this, a digital projector. No more reels. Movies are downloaded and played off a hard drive. The picture is brighter and clearer than ever before. You can't touch it. I mean, for the price um, and for what you get and, and how far the theater has come, or this one has come nowadays, this is wonderful. And that's all that Rex and his family want to hear especially since they're usually too busy here to watch the show. Both my granddaddy and, and father both would really love it, you know. They like progress and they love this business, you know. We kept it going. In Center, Alabama, I'm Philip Onimus.